Rub up your engines! Well, the price of diesel fuel has hit an all-time high, 529.6. Well, almost five dollars and thirty cents a gallon, right? And you might say, "Well, I don't drive a diesel. I don't care." Well, you buy things, so you're going to care. Almost everything is carried by diesels. The trucks are all diesels, right? The trains, they're diesel motors that generate electricity and then drive down. Everything will end up costing more. You may not be buying that diesel fuel because you got a gasoline car, an electric car, but you're going to be affected by the price of diesel because everything runs on diesel. The garbage truck that picks up your garbage, it runs on diesel. Don't think that just because you don't drive a diesel, the price of diesel fuel isn't going to affect you. It's going to affect you an awful lot. And if you do own a diesel vehicle, you're going to be really mad. You bought it because it got better gas mileage, but now it costs so much more. It negates the mileage you save because you're paying so much more for this. Stuff. Everything's going up. So just because you don't drive a diesel, don't think the price of diesel doesn't affect your life. Mitchell says, I changed the transmission fluid on my vehicle after 187,000 miles, and so now it slips. It revs up before it takes off. Should I be worried? Yeah, you should have asked me in the first place. If you don't know the history of a vehicle, do not change the fluid if it's got 187,000 miles. Normally, you want to change it every 60,000. If I had a CVT Nissan, I change it every 30. But you need to change it regularly. If you don't, and you get 187,000 miles and you change it often, they start to slip, which is the case that you have. Now, if you're lucky, did you save the old fluid? You could drain some out and put the old fluid back in. That's what a lot of guys that know cars like me. If somebody says, look, you know, I'm worried. It's got a lot of mileage on it. I say, look, well, don't change the fluid if you don't know the history, but you can drop the pan. You can change the filter, which is always good to change the filter. Save the old fluid and put it back in. You can do that. Lots of guys will do that. Unfortunately, you put in the new fluid. Now, if you don't have the old fluid about back in, you only got one thing you could try. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. You can get some of that Lucas anti-slip transmission additive. Take a quart of fluid out of the transmission, put a quart of that that Lucas transmission slip stop. Sometimes it stops them from slipping, but that's why you don't change them when they're real high mileage if you don't know the history. Now, let's say you change it every 50, 60,000 miles, you're at 190, and I'll go ahead and change it again. But if you haven't, you're taking a big gamble. Sometimes a stop slip works, sometimes not. But that's about the only choice you have unless you saved your old fluid and are willing to put it back in. Sanyo, Scotty, my 09 Corolla is having issues with the oxygen sensor and catalyst monitor for emissions. I tried cleaner, but it didn't work. What should I do? It's not just the cleaner itself, it's the fuel. Let's say you got weaker fuel in your area. I have had customers put in a cleaner and they would also fill it up with one tank of Shell Super Unleaded, the most expensive gas they have, the highest octane gas. Drove it around for 200 miles, 50 miles, then the light went away and they got it inspected. Now, if you keep trying cleaning and going and it won't, odds are you're going to need a catalytic converter to pass the test. But on the other hand, I had a customer in use with a Toyota Highlander. I used to reset it for him every year. In five years, I reset it. The sixth year, he came in, he was ready to have me reset it. I said, you don't need to, it passed. He said, well, I didn't do anything in the car. I didn't put anything on it. I said, well, where do you buy your gas? He said, I switched the shell. And when he switched the shell, it burned cleaner and the cold went away. XX Dead Angel says, Scotty, I got an 03 Monte Carlo SS. I've been smelling the alternator. It was running fine. I can hear the spark plugs tick and then my fans aren't coming on. Is it really the alternator? Well, the spark plug ticking, I don't know. It could be something else. Could be your valves clicking. But if your fans aren't coming on, it could easily be the alternator. Go to any auto parts store, any mechanic. We can check your alternator in two minutes. We've got computer machines. We hook them up, zoom, zoom, does the test, tell you if your battery is good, tell you if your alternator is good. Start there. It doesn't take two, three minutes. Auto parts stores, they all check them too. Sometimes their equipment's kind of crappy and the guys don't know how to operate it, so you're really better off with a mechanic. Somebody who knows they're doing it, just some minimum wage kid at an auto parts store using some old cheap equipment that may or may not work all that well. Carlos says, Scotty, can a newer Toyota like a 2016 Camry last 300,000 miles with proper maintenance? Yeah, I stay off in cam. I've actually seen some that had that kind of mileage on it. Now, the very, very, very new ones with that fancy Toyota system, that I don't know because when they started putting a gasoline direct injection and all the technology on them, and some of them are turbocharged, as to whether they're going to last as long or not, 
Only time will tell. They do make good vehicles, so you never know. But 2016, in terms of technology, is still some of it's pretty old technology. You know, that was what six years ago, and I've seen those go well over 300 and have no problems if you change the oil every 5,000 miles and keep air in the tires. Danny Garcia, 2003, says Scotty, love the channel. Do I need to resurface my brake rotors every time I change the brake pads? Truthfully, I would never resurface them. Here's the thing. When I was a young mechanic, the rotors were made out of cast iron, they were real thick. They didn't care about weight, they wanted them to last. Now, for two reasons, they're thinner, it's cheaper to make thin ones, they weigh less, there's less sprung weight on the vehicle, and so it can accelerate better, get a little bit better gas mileage, so they make them thinner. You resurface modern brake rotors, odds are they'll warp really fast afterwards from being thinner, and then the metal will warp, you hit the pads, and your steering wheel will shake when you brake fast. So, no, as long as it doesn't shake, leave them alone. When it starts shaking, or you see gouges on it, then replace them. But don't ever resurface them, it's stupid on a modern car. A lot of guys do it because they got a brake lathe machine, they want to make money out of it, charging it to resurface them. It's not a good thing to do, either replace them, or leave them alone. Do not resurface them because they're thinner and then they'll warp even faster. The less metal, the more the heat will warp them faster. Wendell Gray says, Scotty, greetings from snowbound Manitoba. I drove through there once. With gas prices going to the roofs, should I trade out my 2015 RX350 for a 2022 Venza Hybrid? I do mostly highway driving. Thoughts? I would. If you can get a decent, you can get a lot of money for the vehicles these days. If you can, great. I'm not particularly a hybrid fan, but you're talking about a brand new one. It's going to last quite some time before it breaks. It's a Toyota product. You're going to get much better gas mileage than you were in the RX350. The RX350s are fine vehicles, but they're relatively big. They're high up in the air. They're not aerodynamic, and they don't get very good gas mileage because of that. I had one on loan from Toyota. I was road testing it, and the one I got, it was rated at, oh, 34 miles a gallon on the highway. I think I got 22 when I drove from San Antonio, Houston, back and forth. So they don't get very good gas mileage, Then the hybrid will get much better gas mileage. Anteco 03 says, how do I fix my Jeep that won't start? I got 2016 Jeep with 96,500 miles. My battery died twice, I fully charged the battery, and the car chokes out. Sometimes it goes to 1,000 RPM, down to 500, back to 1,000, and then it idles okay. I had the battery starter and alternator tested, and they all said they're okay. What could it be? I'm assuming they tested it correctly. It's not that hard to test batteries and alternators with modern equipment. So let's say they tested it correctly. They didn't, of course. It could be the battery to the starter. If it keeps stalling out, you got to start with the simple things. Numero uno, change the fuel filter. Clogged fuel filter will do that. Check your spark plugs. Maybe they need to be replaced. They wear out. Make sure you got a clean air filter. Then when it is running, listen, because you say the RPMs go up and down. If you're sucking sound, you got a vacuum leak. Six-year-old Jeep, the rubber vacuum lines could have broken on it. You can even have a dirty mass airflow sensor. For that, you'd watch my video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner, Scotty. You can clean the throttle, you can clean the mass airflow sensor with spray cleaner. You can buy the two bottles for like 20 bucks, the pair of them, and clean it. It'll clean them 10 or 15 times. You'll never buy the cleaner again, probably ever, if you only have one car. And that could easily solve the problem. But when they go up and down, it's often there's a vacuum leak or the mass airflow sensor isn't working or the fuel filters clog or the air filter clog. Things you can easily change yourself first. Start with the simple stuff and then work your way up if you have to. Dover Street 96 says, I got a 95 Jeep Grand Cherokee, the transmission slipping. My grandfather gave it to me. It's got 300,000 miles. Now, I noticed slight slipping in gear changes. You check the fluid and it's low. Should I add some? Well, of course, you want to add it. You want to keep it at a level. That is an old vehicle and you say it's starting to slip. Rather than than just add fluid, get some of the Lucas transmission fix. Now, it doesn't work that good in modern cars, but that's not a modern car. That's a 95, and it works great there. You put the Lucas transmission fix slip instead of the fluid, comes in a quart, pour the whole thing in, and make sure it's at the full line. Now, if it isn't to the full line then, then do add a little more fluid after that to make sure it's full. But that stop slip can work miracles on an old transmission. Now, it's a Jeep. It's a 95. I mean, hey, it could just be wearing out and saying goodbye, but that Lucas transmission stop slip works fantastic with old American vehicles like that. So I would try that first. Mopi says, I got a 2008 Toyota Camry with a transmission problem. There's a grinding noise coming from it. It won't go over 10 miles an hour. I can't get a straight answer on what it is. What's wrong with it? Well, I can tell you what's wrong. The transmission's broken. It's unfortunate, but somebody 08s, they got high mileage on them. 
when they broke what generally happens is the differential part of it breaks in the olden days you had an engine and then behind it was a transmission then there was a drive shaft and there was a differential in the back running into your rear wheels well yours is a front wheel drive car so the transmission and differential is a one piece unit they're built together and the weak points of those are the differentials wear out first and when you hear a grinding noise it means the differential gears and bearings are all worn out and it won't go over 10 because it's all broken and it's just kind of limping long they grind like that don't try to fix yours it's not worth it either do potluck with a used one from a junkyard or buy a remanufactured transmission do not attempt to fix one that's grinding because there's so much damage inside it's not worth fixing guys rebuild them yes but when they grind there's physical damage to gears and bearings and that's so expensive because the gears and stuff cost so much money from Toyota it's not worth rebuilding them so forget yours either go used or buy a factory manufactured one and put it in so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell